And we should be live in a few minutes. Okay. Okay, great. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us. We are live. It's Fertility Talk. It's Friday afternoon. Today, we have Dr. Q. So Dr. Q is a fertility specialist in Gauteng. Thank you for joining us, doctor. Uh, we are really excited and we are happy to have you. Um, the topic today is quite an interesting one. Um, and I think Doc will, will go through all the details about it. Uh, we're discussing fibroids. So this is a subject that we get a lot about. And I honestly, I don't have, because I don't suffer from it, I, not, not because I don't suffer from it, but because I've never really dealt with it at all. So I don't have that much information about it. So I'm really interested to hear about it. And, um, and there's lots of women I know that is dealing with fibroids. And um, so guys, if you have questions, please, please um, just put your questions in, your, in the comments there. At the end of the talk, we, we will discuss, um, Doc will be able to answer your questions. And if not, we'll also give Doc's details and um, her website. So it's Dr. Q from the Family Center. Um, doc, you can just maybe um, give more details about you, where you guys are situated. And yeah, um, thank you again for joining us. We're very, very happy and interested to hear what you've got to say. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Leanne. And thank you to Fertility Solutions and uh, all those have, who have joined us today. So uh, yes, you, it's a very uh, interesting topic and um, also a very sad one to those who suffer from fibroids. And uh, unfortunately, it's also a very common topic, um, a, a very common, because it's a common condition. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be interesting to know that about 50 to 60% of women who are of reproductive age actually suffer from fibroids. So um, it, it means, um, if you have women of the ages of between 25 to 35, for example, um, at least one in every two women will be having fibroids. So that's how common it is. And it's not something that women are always aware of. So that's one thing that we're also going to talk about. Women can have fibroids and not even know. Okay, so it will be, uh, it, it's, it's, I think the right way to start is to actually um, define fibroids to know what exactly are fibroids. Okay, so when we talk fibroids in uh, simple terms, we just mean an abnormal growth in the womb. Okay, in uh, complicated medical terms, we call them benign monoclonal tumors of the muscle of the womb. But that being simplified, a uh, tumor is usually associated with cancer, but these are non-cancerous growths that are found in the muscle of the womb. So the womb is made up of three layers. You've got the lining of the womb, which is what I usually call the cushion for um, receiving the baby. And then there's the muscle, which is like the, the it forms the bulk of the, uh, the womb, which is the, the house of where the baby is actually um, kept safe. That's the muscle. And then there's an outer covering, which is a very thin layer. It's like a paint over. And this is called the serosa. So that is what makes up the womb. So when there is an abnormal growth, it means there is like a small ball. It could just imagine a tennis ball, but not as big, you know, or a yeah. golf ball, you know, um, that is growing in the muscle of the womb. So that is what actually a fibroid is. And it, they come in different sizes and they can be in different locations. Um, in the womb itself. So that is what actually matters. Mainly it's the size of the fibroid that uh, determines whether the fibroid is detrimental to fertility and pregnancy. And it's also the location of the fibroid as to where exactly is it located in the womb. So now women would like to, uh, will tell you, those that have fibroid um, will tell you how they suffer. And just from listening to what they're saying, you can already tell that, okay, if I do this lady's sauna, I'm most likely to find a fibroid. This is because women will present, mainly will tell you that they have very heavy periods. 
they'll tell you um, I, I change a pad every two hours or I change a pad every hour or I have to use double pads and a tampon at the same time otherwise mm -hmm. I'll mess myself or you know um, it will be or I, I won't be able to go to work or I won't be able to go to school so and not only are the periods very heavy but they are also associated with loss of pain so fibroids also cause serious contractions around the muscles of the womb and um, this leads to a lot of pain so women have a lot of painful periods and then others will have cosmetic effects effects where they'll be complaining of an enlarged tummy you know others women will look like they are four or five months pregnant when they're not and this is because this growth has become so large it goes past the umbilicus and they look as if they're pregnant and at times women may have this and just keep thinking, oh, I have a big belly, I have a big belly, whereas yeah. really there's a growth inside the womb. So these are some of the things that women will present with. And then with this growth being um, 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 housed internally, it also affects the other internal organs where it is the bladder. It presses a lot on the bladder. So women will have frequency and they need to urinate more frequently. Or it can also go and um, or a press on the, the kidney pipes, which is what we call the ureters. Then you have obstruction. Then that also causes more pain. And also defecation may also be obstructed because of bowel being pressed on. So those are just some of the symptoms <laughs> that uh, women with fibroids can um, present with. And then most women would like to know, um, why do I have fibroids, you know, and yeah. the, the, the question we all ask, why me, why me, you know, um, unfortunately, we don't have all answers to that. But we can say that some um, women that have fibroids, you find that mostly it's hereditary. So if your mother okay. uh, was affected, then you and your sisters will most likely be affected. <clears throat> it can be um, something that runs in the family and unfortunately again it is quite it, it is found to be quite common in women who are of African descent so black women in South Africa and mostly women in uh, um, northern um, African countries are also having a very high rate of uh, fibroids as well then also women that have not had any pregnancy till the age of 30 and above. So women in their third decade of life who've always been menstruating on a monthly basis without any interruption, then those ones are at higher risk of actually developing fibroids or women who started menstruating very early before the age of 11 or so, uh, those ones also have got a higher, it means they've been exposed to estrogen very long and estrogen is actually associated with the uh, risk factor of actually developing, uh, the pathology of actually fibroid development. So that's basically some of the things that um, are associated as risk factors that cause um, fibroids. Um, and another issue that we can't do anything about is age. So the more we grow or the more we advance in age, the higher the risk of actually developing fibroids. Okay, and things that are lifestyle related are high caffeine in, uh, intake. So those ladies that love their coffee and have all these other things. <laughs> okay, I've got an option for you. It's yeah. <laughs> I should, I should, I know. Water. <laughs> okay, so that's a healthy option. So high increase, uh, um, increased uh, caffeine intake, smoking, we know almost every problem or uh, health related has yeah. something to do with smoking and alcohol. So smoking and alcohol also increases the chances or the risk. And also having uncontrolled uh, blood pressure can also result in uh, fibroid development. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So yeah, then mm -hmm. some of the things also um, uh, when it comes to fertility, 
Yeah. So women mostly want to know, can I, can you, can you just focus on my fertility and not worry about fibroids? I don't want no. an operation or I don't want you to do anything else on me, but give me a baby, you know? Yeah. So this, I usually use this example when um, it comes to fibroid and fertility. Take it that, yes, you want a baby. Now, we said the womb is the house of the pregnancy, okay? Now, if let's take it as if you want to plant a peach tree. You've got the seeds and you need the field for your peach tree to grow. When you get to your field and you're carrying your seeds, you find that in the field, there's huge rocks in this place, lots yeah. of stone, lots of cement, and you want to plant in this field. So basically, it's as simple as that, because if you throw your seeds in that field on top of the cement, there won't be yeah. any root penetration. There won't, then your seed will not be getting good um, inflow of water and sunlight yeah. and all that. Then you won't get a good peach garden. You understand? Yeah. So before yeah. you plant in that field, you need to go first, remove all those rocks, remove all that cement, and get fertile ground then you can take your seed and plant it properly in the land where it can penetrate and let the roots reach good supply so that's what a pregnancy is also like so if we get to the womb and there's rocks there as i said fibroids are, are, are like tumors these abnormal growths so if we get there and you want an, a pregnancy to implant and this is close to the lining of the womb, then the, the, the penetration of the placenta will not be deep enough to hold the pregnancy. And the baby will not get good blood flow and will not get good oxygen. And therefore that pregnancy may result in a miscarriage. And if, it, if, if, if any implantation has taken place, it may go over maybe to be even an advanced pregnancy, but has a high risk of being a preterm labor because everything starts at the point of implantation. Yeah. So that's how fibroids actually affect fertility. And that's why it's important to actually remove or it's recommended yeah. to actually remove the fibroids first, then you've got a proper complete house that is ready for implantation. Wow. Okay, so um, what I'm hearing, Doc, is that um, we definitely, that is why we actually definitely need to go and see a gynae at, at, at some point um, and go and see before we decide to even go, um, you know, I, okay, I want to fall pregnant now, I want to try and conceive. It's important to actually go for your checkups and go for your test, make sure that your house is in order. Yeah, yes, before yes. before you start doing it, which is yeah, absolutely. Um, so what what would you say? I'm just gonna while while you're talking, and I'm gonna actually go and look at the um, the questions that we have here um, mm -hmm. that are sent. So we've got a few comments. Um, okay, it's the uh, my, my question first is what would you recommend to someone that that is. Um, that has fibroids, what would the first step be? Going to going to a doctor, um, you know, coming to see a, a facility specialist or going to your gynae and having them removed and what they can, what can they do in their daily life to ensure that, you know, it doesn't return or is it something that you can stop or can't stop? Yeah, yeah, okay. So basically I want a woman to know that, you know, not every diagnosis of a fibroid equals surgery. Okay. So if you go to a doctor and it happens to be an incidental finding, you don't have all these symptoms that I mentioned before, and um, you are told that you have fibroids. Okay. Then it depends on your current situation then. I, are you symptomatic or not? Are you having pain? Are you having abnormal bleeding? Are you anemic or not? You know, and if those are not your problems, and um, are you done with your family making, or would you still like to have kids? Are you want, do you plan on having kids now or six years from now? You know, so all those are all the things. So every 
treatment is individualized. It's not a okay. one cap fits all kind yeah, of yeah. Uh, approach. So look at what your priority is and where surgery is mostly indicated is number one, if the woman has abnormal uterine bleeding where the periods are heavy and they may even end up being anemic and, sympt and symptomatic, or if women have unbearable, um, severe abdominal pains or menstrual pains that they are asking for treatment for, and it's most likely associated with fibroids. And yeah. if the, the fibroid is located in the area of the womb where it is, it can affect the pregnancy. So yeah. those are just at the top of my head, the the indications of actually removal of fibroids and if the fibroid is there and it's far off towards the end of the womb and it's not affecting the inner center where implantation takes place and you're not even symptomatic then there's really no reason for you to actually no. worry about a fibroid being removed so it's usually a fibroid that is at least five millimeters towards the inside of the womb or a fibroid that is above five centimeters that needs okay. to be removed Okay, so then I've got a, thank you, doctor. I got a question from Ponso. It says, um, so she says, I was diagnosed with intermural fibroid about 2.5 centimeters in 2017, but now all the symptoms I had are gone and trying for a baby. What are my chances of conceiving? Um, I know that that might be a difficult question to answer, um, because it would depend on you having, you know, doing the, the necessary checks and stuff. But, yes. all, but I think what she's asking is, is does because the, because she's got no symptoms, should it be okay? You know? Awesome. Yeah. Look, as I said, um, if the fibroid is still less than five centimeters, even if it's intramural, then we just want to know, is it close to the lining of the womb or not? If it's less than five centimeters, it's far away from the lining of the womb, then it should not affect her, um, her fertility much. So okay. if she asks, what are my chances of falling pregnant? Well, that depends on a, a whole lot of other factors. Yeah. How old is she? Are her tubes fine? You know, and all those things and her ovarian reserve. But as far as the fibroid is concerned, she's asymptomatic. It's a small fibroid. It's not lying close to the cavity. Then she should be fine. Okay, great. And then Alicia is asking, can fibroids be removed and is it painful to remove it? Yes, <laughs> but you don't feel okay. the pain when we do it. No. <laughs> so yes, uh, fibroids can be removed. There's a few ways that fibroids can be removed. If we remove them surgically, <clears throat> then um, we put you to sleep. So you don't feel the pain. So at that time, yes, it's not painful. And then there is um, a procedure where we can, depending on where exactly is the fibroid, if it's more towards the inside of the cavity or the, uh, the opening of the womb, then we go in vaginally with the camera and we are able to resect the fibroid from the inside. Mm -hmm. But if the fibroid is on the muscle um, itself, then um, we can do one of two ways. One is what we call keyhole surgery, where we go in with instruments and make one centimeter or half a centimeter um, small holes on the abdomen, it's about three or four of them. And we put in a camera and we are able to go in and reset and remove the fibroid. Or then we can go in the bikini line and um, as if you, you're having a cesarean section. And if you are doing it for future pregnancy, it actually works out fine as well, because then you have that one incision, you have your babies, yeah. three babies through the same incision and not many um, old scars to actually deal yeah, with. Yeah. So that is called a laparotomy. Okay. okay. Yeah. So then we have another one. Um, <clears throat> so as I'm reading your questions, it's like you've already answered some of them, but I'm going to ask it because because ladies asked it. You've answered okay. it in, in your talk. Um, so are they hereditary? Yes, they can be. <laughs> okay. can be history, okay. uh, and then you just answered, is surgery the only way to remove them? Um, so so I think what the what the question is, um, she's asking. Can 
Is there any medication as well besides the surgery? Is there medication okay. that can be taken to help, you know, um, okay. even minimize it or something? Yes, okay, so there are options. It depends really on what your main intention is and where are you in the reproductive scale, okay? Uh -huh. um, so number one is, there is symptomatic management where you just want to manage the heavy bleeding. So you can even consider going on an injection, a Depo-Provera, the three monthly injection, just to manage the bleeding and reduce the bleeding. Yeah. And that's all that you need. Probably you don't have pain. So you can consider that. Um, depending on where the fibroid is as well, if it's not distorting the anatomy and your problem is only heavy bleeding, then you can go on a Mirena, which is what some people call a loop or an intrauterine okay. device. So we put in the intrauterine device, it releases a local hormone that thins the lining of the womb, reduces bleeding. Then if bleeding was your only concern, then you sort it. You don't have to surgically remove the yeah. fibroids should the Mirena work for you. Then even oral contraceptives as well, just being on an oral contraceptive, uh, it regulates your period. It gives you fewer days of uh, menstruating and you can know when exactly you're menstruating. So those are the medical ways of actually treating fibroids. There are other drugs that can actually reduce the size of the fibroid, but these drugs, they are called GnRH um, agonists, okay? We put patients on these drugs for at least four to six months. And um, the thing about these drugs is one, we need high motivation for them. We need to say that we've tried all these other options that I mentioned okay. and before we are able to try this drug. And um, they are able to reduce the size of the fibroid, reduce heavy bleeding. They are unfortunately associated with other side effects like hot flushes and you know other symptoms of menopause, mood swings and all that. But then we put you on an oral contraceptive to try and counteract those results. So this is for people who say, look, I've got fibroids. I don't need other things. I just want them to be managed or to manage the symptoms. Yeah then they can go on G a GNRH agonist. And um, that is only for a short time. Uh, unfortunately for us, if you're gonna go on this drug and then consider removing them surgically, it does make surgery a bit difficult, but it's not something okay. we cannot overcome. Yeah. Then there are drugs called um, sperm, SPRM, Selective Progestogen Receptor Modulators. Unfortunately, they're not in the country as yet, but if you've got relatives in the US or somewhere who can get you these drugs, Mostly they are used also for like three to six months, depending on the size of your fibroids. They're not uh, um, recommended for huge fibroids that we see mostly in our country, yeah. you know, like a 24 week plus kind of wow. uh, uh, size of a fibroid. But in uh, small sized fibroids, mostly less than 10 centimeters, they are able to reduce the size of the fibroids over time. Okay, so those are the medical uh, options. And then this, but um, do note that they don't completely take the fibroid away. So no, if no. you are planning for fertility purposes, the best option will actually to be to get the fibroid surgically removed. And the other method of treating without surgery or medication is what we call uterine artery embolization. This is done by interventional radiologists and they are able to inject something like a dye that goes and blocks the blood supply to the uterus. So when it blocks the blood supply to the uterus, it reduces blood supply to the fibroid. Then the yeah. fibroid starts shrinking because it's not being fed anymore and that way it dies off. It's a very controversial topic when it comes to discussing this with us fertility specialists because we are of the school of thought that when they try to reduce blood supply to the ovary, there is some unintended um, um, spread of the, um, the, this device into the ovarian blood supply. So if you are somebody who has fibroids and would still like to have kids in the future, Personally, we don't recommend that you have uterine artery embolization because it can also affect the seed, your ovary as well. Yes, yes, and then yes. you have reduced egg quantity. Wow. So it's okay. mostly for people who have completed their families and they just want yeah. to do bleeding and stuff like that. 
So, so is it, am I right in saying it's um, is fibroid? So if 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 I have, for example, if I had a fibroid and fibroid is doesn't matter what the size of it is, um, and I have it removed surgically, does it mean I'm continue? I'm always going to get it all the time. I'm prone to getting it all the time, or once it's gone, it's gone. Um, mostly, once we remove it, it's removed. I think okay. the people who would maybe have fibroids, uh, fibroid this year and a big fibroid next year, it's maybe when the surgery is done and some fibroids are still small but left behind, then those yeah. are the ones that actually then are increasing over the years. But if we manage to remove all fibroids that are palpable, uh, if it's open surgery or that are visible, then um, women can go on for years without having any fibroids um, recurring, actually. Perfect. Um, then we've got another question from Faith. Faith asked, is it true that if you have fibroids, you have a discharge? You Or you're prone to having discharges? Um, not necessarily. Um, it may happen that you see fibroids are associated with abnormal bleeding. So if you have fibroids, it doesn't mean now that you must be fine if you're having an abnormal discharge. And I think, again, it must be uh, one needs a better description of that discharge. Is it offensive? Yeah. Does it have a bad smell or odor? You know, um, what color is the discharge? I mean, because any discharge that is offensive is not right, whether you have fibroids or not. Okay. okay. And any funny looking discharge um, that is away from clear or white is also abnormal, whether you have fibroids or not. So it depends on that discharge that you have. Okay, the last question we have um, is a lady asking, um, okay, I don't have a name with this one. So she's asking, if you're over 50 and um, you're obviously not wanting to have babies or anything, would it be, and you've got fibroids, um, would, would it be recommended to actually remove your womb in that sense? Okay. Um, a womb that is not troubling you, you would rather not remove it unless there are problems. So when you have fibroids and you are menopausal, it depends again, when did those fibroids develop? Did you have yeah. it before and you were fine and now you've menopaused? The good thing about menopause though is that fibroids no longer get the estrogen because when you've menopause, there's a reduction in estrogen and fibroids feed on estrogen. So therefore it is understood that when you're menopausal, all the symptoms of fibroids should die. But I must say, um, having said that, that menopause is also associated with a higher risk of cancers, be it ovarian or endometrial cancer and so on. So maybe if one suddenly finds out that they have fibroids at the stage of menopause, it may be important to just do a proper scan to make sure that it is nothing cancerous. And yeah. if not, and it's, it's, it's just um, uh, non-cancerous fibroids, there wouldn't be a need to actually remove the womb unless you have abnormal postmenopausal bleeding then that is an indication to remove the womb. And then other women want to know, should I remove the womb or should I remove the fibroids? That yeah. is actually really on um, an individual basis. Some women feel, I don't want to die with certain parts of my body missing. So mm. I may not enter heaven for whatever reason, you know, or my ancestors will not welcome me with me having left my womb on earth. So yeah. if they don't want to lose the womb, and uh, unfortunately in the government sector, once you are 40 and above, the recommendation is to just do a hysterectomy and remove the fibroids with the womb. But in the private sector, if you can pay for just removal of the fibroids, then we do what you want. You know, if you want to yeah, keep your yeah. womb, we just take out the fibroids and you keep your womb. And if you yeah. feel, look, uh, I don't want to bleed anymore. I don't want to be doing pop smears anymore. I'm fine as I am take this out, it's done its job, then yes, we can take out the fibroids with the womb, same time, and you're done. No more bleeding, no more risk of cancer of the cervix or the womb, and uh, no more pop smears. So yeah. it's really on an individual basis. 
Okay, I've got one question, one last question for you, Doc. Um, what would be the advantages if you, after you know, after childbearing years, I'm always hearing women having their wombs removed and stuff. Um, and yeah, so, so what would be my advantage of actually removing my womb, even if it's not giving me any issues or anything like, like that, you know, I've just got PCOS. Um, what would be my advantage of doing something like this? Okay, so you see, again, as I said, it's, it's really on an individual basis. And I personally, I don't recommend women to go for a major operation like a hysterectomy, a hysterectomy when there's really no medical problem. So yeah. I, I, I had a 28-year-old 28, 28 uh, just yesterday saying to me, why are you guys not wanting me to remove my womb? I have one baby and I'm done. I've had hell enough and I don't want any more. It's my body. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's my body. So why are you saying no? You know, and I, I even said to her, let's say you go in and there's a complication. I go to remove your womb because you're just fed up and there's a complication. And now I have to stand before the court of law and say, why was I removing your womb? What leg do I have to stand on? What was it that was troubling you so much that I would choose to put you under anesthesia and put you through the surgical risk um, that uh, complications develop and, and this happens. Yeah. And now your, your, your husband is a widower and your, your, your child is without a mother, you know? So yeah. there must be something that is, there must be proper indications for any okay. operation. And it must be that benefit versus risk. So okay. what is the benefit and what risk are we trying to avoid? You understand? Yeah. So then again, so when your womb is removed, then if you were running away from cancer or heavy menstrual bleeding, which can result in a decreased quality of life, some women end up not attending meetings, not going to work or whatever, because we've tried yeah. everything and nothing is working for them. So there it's, it's, it's taking you to theater because we want to improve your quality of life, um, away from the pain, away from the bleeding, away from cancer and so on and so forth. So really it is on an individual visualized basis and yes the benefits will then be not bleeding anymore saving on pads you know having a good quality yeah, yeah. of life and not going for butt smears and all those other things <laughs> okay perfect wow thank you doctor um yeah i think we've answered all our questions now um, thank you very much for that. Um, we hope to have you back soon again. I'm sure in the new year we'll, we'll, we can have you back again. Um, so thank you again for all you're doing. And um, it's so it's really nice to see that it's, you know, there's a, there's, there's a female behind it. You always associate a fertility specialist with a male doctor. Not, yeah. not to say anything about male doctors, please, guys. <laughs> but um, it's, it's really nice to see. And I think there's a lot of women that always... Um, they, they're more than happy to rather go and see a female. So ladies, if you are, um, Dr. Q is in Johannesburg, maybe you just want to give some details about exactly where you are and how they can get, um, get hold of you, doctor. Okay, so we are based in Centurion at um, Unitas, uh, Netcare Unitas Hospital. We are just a wing of the hospital at the Lifestyle Management Center or Centurion Eye Clinic. And our phone number is 012-644-0299 or at uh, familymatters.co.za. Um, that's our uh, uh, website where most of our information and our Facebook and Instagram handles will be found. Okay, great. Thank you very much. And have a great weekend, doctor. See Thanks. You. Thanks for having me. You keep well. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye. -bye.